Hey yo, hey yo, hey. Let's try this. Let's try if I can get a live in without my children screaming and hollering as though they don't have common sense. And ain't talking about nothing at all. Um, I just want you guys to pay attention. Pay attention to people that don't want to prove who they are. People that say that they're this and say that they're that, but they don't want to prove who they are. Who they are. Being human, I'm understanding. I know sometimes I might tell my child, oh yeah, I'm going to get you um, a cake from the store and then I don't get the cake. I'm not talking about that type of proof. I'm talking about proving that you can be there when things get rough, when times get rough, that you can be there for car needs, house needs, material needs, um, long term. And if you think about it, when we go to finance a vehicle, when you go to rent a house, when you go to purchase a house, they ask for proof. When you're in a relationship or you start in a relationship, make sure that you have your proof that that is the man and a woman that you can be with. It's wet. Daddy and me have high flower cover. My cover is too small. Jesse has the green cover. I have high flower cover. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm doing a lot. And please forgive me, you all, when I am interrupted, especially by the five-year-old, because I, um, I tried to... How do I say it? I try to be available for my children no matter what when I'm available. Them older children, you know, they you know, they they get some nerves. We will talk about that on another live. Um so yeah, just make sure that you are be be firm, be bold and get in your proof when you're choosing a mate, when you're ready for a mate. When you're thinking about a mate. Um, and uh, I think that was it. Because I have these. I take notes. When it's something that I think about. That I want to share with you all. And that just was really. It was really bothering me. What it was is that um, a couple of weeks ago. A young man was trying to pursue me. He wasn't a young man. He was an old man. He was trying to pursue me. And um, he said something as though we were having a conversation. He said something as though, why do women feel like a man? And they got to prove, they got to prove themselves. They got to prove themselves. And I'm thinking, why wouldn't you prove yourself? Brother or sister, sister to brother, you should be happy when your sister gets to a place where she's valuable and she knows she's valuable and she wants you to know that she's valuable and she wants you to know that you're valuable because that's the place that one is in when they ask for those type of proofs it's like okay you saying that you like me you saying this you saying that but i know what i'm capable of i've been with me what are you capable of or what can you bring to the table and anytime you want to sit at someone's table come with receipts Come with receipts. You're moving into a woman's house. She don't want you just moving to her house. She, especially if she got kids, she don't want you moving to her house. And she don't know if you got a job, can keep a job. If you got a job, can keep a job. Is you going to pay bills or do you got other intentions? What we have to understand is that when you're in your 40s, 50s, and 30s, you tired of the motives. Because when you're in your teens and you're in your 20s and some in their 30s, they have motives when they're not an adult. Some men wants to live with you until they can find another woman that they want to live with. Some men, and I just don't say men, but some men or women want to live with you until they can save their money to get a place. And then allow the woman or man that they want to be with to live with them. So just make sure that when you come to the table that you have receipts and when you have her in that conference of starting that relationship, sitting at that round table. Make sure that you have your receipts. Make sure that you have your vision for your future with that person. So that is just something that um I wanted to tell you all. 
Um, and, uh, yeah. And another thing is that when you are, um, this, this is just two totally different subjects. But a lot of times when I, and I will say this in all of my lives, that when my child come around that I will stop talking on a live and I may attend to my child. When we are raising our children, we try to fix any problem than when we were a child. And I'm not saying that my mother didn't give me attention or my mother didn't do things for me. But in my growth and my finding who I am, and it took for me to see role, other role models, for me to see my mom, for me to see grandma, aunts and uncles, for me to get to a place to where this is how I'm going to raise my children. This is how I'm going to be with my children. I don't care who's doing what. That's just always something for me to be protective for my children. Be protective over my children. Be protective over what they hear, over what they see. Because kids, don't they tell y'all? They they will tell. They will tell. You and your you and your people is y'all may be talking about another family member and them kids over here. And when that family member come in the room, baby, that family member can feel it, can sense it. Cause that baby looking at that family member like. Because they didn't heard all that stuff. <laughs> they didn't heard about all your dirty laundry. And now they looking at you like. <laughs> so I just try to be careful when I'm around my children. I, I don't like to talk about other folks. I don't like to talk about my business. I don't like to talk about relationships. I don't like to talk about none of that. Especially while I'm in the midst of it. Now after the relationships is over. Yeah, I, I'll tell my children. Yeah, because he didn't want to do this or he didn't want to do that or that, that, that. And that's because I don't want them to have validation from an ex or for them to feel like as though my mama should have stayed with that person. That person was a good person. I always just try to say this is what, that's why I'm not with that person. I, I do that with my kids. Father. My kids, they love their father. And there's nothing wrong with loving your father. I love my father. My father don't do what he's supposed to do as a father when I was a child. And as an adult, I know that I see that. I see other fathers doing what they're supposed to do. And I just, I like to just tell the truth, just tell the truth. Um, yeah, but with my father, my father was very smart. He didn't, he know that he wasn't really trying to do for me. So he stayed away. He stayed away. He came around. He was trying. Once he saw that me and my mother and my stepfather, we was not trying to receive him, his new wife, and a baby. They went their way, and we went our way. And by this time, I was 11, 12 years old. I really didn't really care about all that. So with my children, it's kind of like it's always in limbo with me because sometimes I feel like, oh, stay with your daddy. And then I had to think about it. But your daddy don't want to get a house. And then it'd be like, I'm a bad person. That nigga not living with me. I'm sorry. Sorry. If you want to live with your father and be under the roof with your father, he needs a house. But that's another lie. That's a, that's another that's another chit chat. We're going to have a lot of chit chats, y'all. We're going to have a lot of chit chats. And I'm going to try to make sure that I keep it positive. But life be life in. Life be life in. Life really do be life in. And, um, no. Hi. She need the charger? No. Uh-uh, you come on and get it. I'm going to put it back on the charger when I get done. But come on, you get the, um... What's up, baby? Um. So, yeah. Just... 
Make sure that you have value and don't allow being this is for my big girl. Watch out for the big girl. I want a big girl. I want a big girl. I want a big girl. Big girls have value. Add a thousand to your value, honey. Add a thousand to your value. Add a thousand to your value. I'm going to say it again. Add a thousand to your value. The doors for us are not open as wide as they are for other females. I don't care about your religion, your race, nationality. I don't care about any of that. If you're a woman and you are a plus size woman, a super plus size woman, an obese woman, whatever it is that they label, add value. Do a little bit extra for you to make you feel good. To make you feel good. Um... They say that we are ostracized because of being plus size. So what they say is that because you are plus size, a man feels that it's okay to take advantage. He feels that it's okay to do whatever it is that he chooses to do because you don't care about you, obviously. Because you, you ate a couple of extra chips than the average female. You ate an extra piece of pizza, whatever it is. But because you have extra weight on you, so don't don't let that define you. Don't let that define you. You was hungry. Maybe your mama had more money than their mama had and was able to get them snacks and able to get them um whatever it is. Um so just know that Because you have weight on you, it does not mean that you cannot meet a man that fits your standards. And make sure that you have standards. It took me until the age of 36 to discover my standards. For me to be firm in my standards, no, I'm not taking that. No, I'm not. Matter of fact, I was about 34. Oh. I was I was about thirty. It's about thirty when I discovered my standards. I'm not gonna be with somebody if they cannot do this. I'm not gonna be with somebody if they don't do this or they don't do that. And sometimes we don't know it's the standards because sometimes it's common sense. It's common sense. But then you have to think about it, everybody don't have common sense. Things like getting up, taking a shower before you start your day, taking a shower before you get in the bed. Some men were not taught that. But honey, if they want you to be get your ass in that shower. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Have standards, honey. Have standards. Have standards. And just value you. That's that's all I'm saying. Just value you because I'm not perfect. Y'all not perfect, but we can become perfect together. We can help each other with these little chit chatters. These little chit chatters. So yeah, and I think I will be back. I know that I will do a um a workout video. Um. Wednesday. Yeah, I don't have to go back to walk on the treadmill until Wednesday, y'all. I missed a week on the treadmill. But baby, my probiotics made up for that. Don't probiotics have me in that bathroom. <laughs> they sure did. But I can't, um, I can't miss I really can't because I really have to be diligent and consistent with going and working out and getting on that treadmill until I'm able to buy me a treadmill because then I could get on the treadmill two or three times a day. Um, whenever I feel like it, in the middle of the night if I feel like it. So that's what I'm aiming for, to get on, a, um, to buy a treadmill. Because really, that's the only thing that I really do is the treadmill. I can do stretches and that type of stuff, but I don't have equipment for all of the other activities that I do, all of the other exercises that I do. I don't, I don't need equipment. So that makes me very confident 
for my journey. And I thank you all for being a part of my journey. I truly, truly, truly thank you for being a part of my journey. I truly, truly, truly thank you. My sisters, reach out to me, chit chat with me. Feel free to comment, um, tell me things that may have helped you on your weight loss journey, things that you might have done, things that you know about, your sister know about, your brother know, just whatever information that you have that can help. Don't be afraid to share. Um, that's that that helps, and I need you all in that way. I really do need you all for the. Um, uplifting and you know